Hello, I'm Jillian Nickerson, and I'm going to talk you all through what goes in wilderness medical kits. So we'll talk about things you need to think about, how to prioritize your kit, what are some options of things you can actually put in the kit, what you might need in certain special environments, and then review what's most important. So why do we even need medical kits? Um, one reason is that it can keep you safe and comfortable. And basically, it's useful to have a medical kit anytime you don't have access to your own medicine cabinet, you can't get to a pharmacy or a hospital quickly. So this can mean anything from a day hike to a month-long journey out in the wilderness. It's important that you think about how heavy it is and how difficult it will be to carry your medical kit with you. So you want something that's lightweight, that won't get destroyed by the environment, that has what you need for the trip that you're going on, um, only what you need and not tons of extra stuff, but also everything that you need. That many of the things in the kit can be used for multiple different purposes and that what's in the kit is useful and appropriate for the trip that you're on and the people who are on the trip with you. So when you're making your medical kit, it's important to think about what it's for. Is it just for you or are you in charge of the whole group? And what, if so, what kind of medical conditions do you or the people in your group have? Also, where you're going, what kinds of um, medical emergencies might come up, how long the trip is might dictate how much of each item you have to carry with you, and what you're going to do. So are you going scuba diving underwater? Are you going rock climbing? Um, what kinds of injuries are most likely to occur on that trip that you're going on? One way to prioritize is to think about uh, the things you can't live without of. So there's this thing called the rule of threes, which gives you a way to prioritize. It basically says that in any extreme situation, you can't survive for more than three seconds without common sense, three minutes without air or blood, three hours without shelter, three days without water, three weeks without food, and 30 days without rest in a continuous heightened state, and three months without companionship. So that can help you think about what's the most important thing. You need um, to be able to control bleeding and get air to your patients quickly. You need to be able to keep your patients warm and dry um, quite quickly. And you need a way to make potable water, um, more than you need extra Snickers bars, however delicious they might be. Uh, another way to think about it is the most important things that you might need. So this is a list of 10 essentials for every outdoor trip. Um, navigation, hydration and nutrition, a pocket knife, with, which can get you out of a lot of tricky situations, sun protection, insulation, so something to keep you warm and dry, a fire starter so you can get yourself and all of your things warm and dry, some way of lighting your path in case you're out in the dark, first aid, shelter, and a whistle. So those are more broad things that need to be, to be brought on a trip, but they're all really, really important in, in terms of keeping the group medically safe. So another way to think is what's what most commonly happens when we're in the outdoors. And the most common things are sprains, strains, and fractures. Um, people trip and fall and hurt themselves. And then a couple of preventable things. So sunburns are really, really common and blisters are really, really common. Both of which are fine and easy to treat once they occur, but really your mainstay is to prevent them if you can. And then things like scrapes, burns, and other wounds, which we'll talk about more in another lecture. So here's another way to guide your medical kit. Um, it's a, an acronym called PAWS, and it means you need to have a medical kit that has P for prevention and procedures, A for analgesics, antibiotics, antiseptics, anaphylaxis, 
W for wound care and weather, and S for survival gear. And if you get something from all of those different categories, you're probably doing pretty well. So uh, you also want to have things for prevention. Um, that's one of the P's and PAWS. Um, that's things like disinfecting soap and gel to prevent infection, clothing to prevent um, cold injuries, gloves, um, infection prophylaxis like antibiotics, uh, insection, insect repellent and netting, water filtration, sunglasses, sunscreen, and a utility knife. You also want to have anything you need for procedures. So this varies drastically depending on whether you're planning for you and a larger group or um, a short trip, a long trip, if people are medically ill or not. Um, but it could include things like a rescue mask for doing CPR, a stethoscope if you anticipate listening to people's lungs, um, as well as suture, scissors, tweezers, materials for cuts and scrapes. Um, it, it really depends. Some of these things are more specialized and might be things you're packing when you're really leading a, a medical lead on a trip to high altitude or with a patient population that's very sick. But it's worth thinking about them all and, and wondering whether or not you need them. The A in pause stands for analgesics, antibiotic, antisepsis. So for this, you can think about um, Tylenol, NSAIDs like ibuprofen, even opiates if you're going on a pretty impressive trip. And then you want to think about antibiotics that will cover um, certain groups of infections. So you could use doxycycline for lung, skin, tick-borne illnesses. Um, levofloxacin can do a lot of things, including um, gut infections, lung, skin, urinary. You can use amoxiclavulanic for skin infections, pneumonia, or also things like ear infections, sinus infections, and azithromycin as well. Choosing these antibiotics is a little more nuanced. We'll definitely talk about it in some of the lectures that go into more detail about specific kinds of infections, but the important thought is um, you don't want to carry tons and tons and tons of antibiotics, so trying to pick something that is tailored to your group and what you think might come up is pretty important. And then you really, really want to think about wound care, because again, this is so, so common in the wilderness. Um, it's important to know that when you buy the over-the-counter uh, medical kits, they really don't have a lot. They'll have two or three Band-Aids, which in a group of 20 people, 10 people, even 5 people is not going to be enough for you. Um, and then thinking about the fact that you can use common things in your pack, like duct tape, to treat a lot of wounds, even protect and prevent hot spots and from forming into blisters. Uh, you also want to think about antibiotic ointment um, and antiseptics because um, infection is really common in wounds in the wilderness. And other things that can come up like eye injuries uh, in the woods. The S in pause is for survival gear. So it's really, really important to always plan for and think about the worst case scenarios. Uh, so that means you want to have things like a matches and lighter, a map, signaling de devices, water and weather protection, um, as well as extra of any personal items or, or um, personal medications that might be needed. Another super common thing that comes up on wilderness trips is allergic reactions and anaphylaxis. So having an uh, an EpiPen or an epinephrine auto injector, or even just a vial of epinephrine with a syringe and needles that you can inject it is something that should be on in every medical kit. And then you supplement that with things like antihistamines, so Benadryl. Um, those patients should also get steroids, especially if there's any sort of severe reaction. And albuterol can be really helpful as well. In your own personal kit, if you're just packing for yourself, you should 
always, always, always bring uh, analgesics, so like NSAIDs for pain, um, some bandages for common cuts, scrapes, wounds, or sprains, and then at least twice as much as what you would need in terms of any personal medications. The way that I think about this is I think about any medication that I ever take um, and then bring a, at least a little bit of that, something that I could have for the trip. So if I almost never take Benadryl, I still bring it on um, my trips and travels because uh, you, you always need what you don't have. Some other useful items to bring are... Uh, duct tape can solve almost anything in my mind. It can patch your tent. It can patch your shoe. Um, it can it can act as sutures in a pretty bad laceration, um, and really is an essential piece of of any outdoor travel. A safety pin can also act as tweezers to remove a foreign body. Um, it can puncture a water bottle to help you irrigate out a wound. Um, and um, pin together any clothing, clothing or, or gear that you need to connect together. And a SAM splint is, is a pretty big, big piece of item, but it can st stabilize lots of uh, wounds, uh, of fractures. It could be a C collar in the event of significant head or neck trauma, um, and can make a patient much more comfortable in the event of a serious injury. And then it's important to think about extreme environments. So we don't necessarily enter them all that often, but as a trained wilderness provider, this is really where you shine. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about altitude and uh, water exposure. All right, so when you go to high altitude, there's a couple of really important pathologies to think about and a few extra medications that you might want to throw in your bag. So the most common thing people get at high altitude is acute mountain sickness, or AMS. Uh, that can be prevented and treated with acetazolamide, or you can use dexamethasone as well. Some people get side effects from the medication and prefer to suffer the, the acute mountain sickness instead, but it can be really, really helpful to take treatments like acetazolamide or dexamethasone um, in order to prevent some of the side effects. Once you get into the more serious categories like high-altitude cerebral edema or HACE or high-altitude pulmonary edema or HAPE, it's critically important to think about um, getting out of the environment. But in the meantime, you can start treating any patients with, for haste, cerebral edema, giving steroids like dexamethasone. And if you're having a patient who's starting to get hape or pulmonary edema, uh, you can start nifedipine before getting them out. But again, for both of those more serious effects of altitude, the most important thing is to get the patient to a lower altitude. Some other things you can think about um, are a gamma bag, which is a pressurized bag to help um, with evacuating a patient. You can think about some ophthalmic medications that could be added in uh, for high altitude. And then you also want to think about a couple things that happen at high altitude, like um, like frostbite and freezing. So thinking about bringing hand and foot warmers, bringing more avalanche safety equipment and uh, rescue equipment, and then also thinking about sun damage at high altitude um, can be really important. For water environments, you might think about drowning more commonly. So bringing a bag valve mask could be helpful. It's also super, super important whenever you're in a watery environment or anywhere in the woods um, to bring water purification. And then also thinking about what kinds of animals or bites or stings could happen, which is certainly different in um, a watery environment. So um, thinking about that when packing your bag is important as well. So I hope this was helpful in giving you a 
sponge a bunch of ideas of what could and should be included in your medical kit, as well as helping you think about prioritization and, and what is the most important for both you and the group that you're with. Here are a couple of the things, the resources that I used in putting together this talk that might be helpful if you're trying to learn a little bit more on about wilderness medical kits.